Welcome to Paris. It's Professor Anyamu's Anatomy Lecture Series. In this place, our goal is to make anatomy simple. If you're just joining us or you have not subscribed, we would like you to subscribe now and be part of this amazing anatomy family where we make anatomy simple. This is the part one in our series of lecture on the median nerve. Part two will be on median nerve injuries and the associated clinical correlates. So let's go to class. One of the interesting parts of our lecture today will be our ability to answer the questions. Number one, why is median nerve called laborous nerve? Number two, why is it also called the eye of the hand or the peripheral eye. Well, by the end of my lecture today, we will be able to understand why when a patient with median nerve injuries wants to make a fist in the suspected hand, we will have a picture like this. Only the little finger and the ring finger will be able to make the fist and the index finger and the middle finger will remain pointed like a priest that wants to bless the people also who will have this picture when the patient wants to clasp the hand the way we are seeing here the index finger will remain pointed and will not be able to form the fist like the other fingers we will also be able to know why this patient may not feel sensations at certain areas of the palm, like the areas marked out in these places. Also, understand why this eminence called the tenor eminence is disappearing, why it is not like here that the palm is normal. So these are more are the things we will be able to understand at the end of our lecture today. In the course of this lecture, we will be able to look at the course and relations of the median nerve, the branches at the various regions, we will be able to look at the distributions, and then we will discuss the clinical correlates. We are going to start from where this nerve started. This nerve has the motor component and also the sensory component. That means it will be able to supply muscles, it will also be able to supply the skin. And like we saw in our lecture in the brachial plexus, we saw this nerve having the following roots, and which are C5, C5 here, C6, and C7, 8, and T1 being part of the root that will give rise to this median nerve. So where do we start seeing median nerve? Median nerve will be seen from the axilla. It will arise in axilla by two roots. Now let's look at our picture. This is a section of the axilla. Now, the nerve here is the median nerve. And then these are the two roots that are giving rise to median nerve. The one here, the lateral root, and the one here, the medial root. So these two roots are the roots that will come together and form the median nerve. Now, the medial root will cross in front of the third part of axillary artery. Here is the axillary artery. In this picture, here is the lateral root, and here is the medial root, and this is the median nerve. We will see that the medial root actually crossed the third part of axillary artery to form the median nerve at the lateral part of the axillary artery. The next 
area we look at will be the costs and relations of median net. We will look at the cost and relation at the level of the arm. We will also look at it at the elbow. We will look at the forearm. We will look at the wrist, carpal tunnel, and then finally the hand. Median nerve in the upper arm will be seen running down on the lateral side of the brachial artery. Now this is the median nerve and then here is the brachial artery running down. And if we remember at the beginning we said that the medial root of median nerve will cross the third part of axillary artery and move to the lateral part of axillary artery to form the median nerve. So at the beginning the median nerve is formed at the lateral aspect of axillary artery and it will descend in this position up to the level of the upper upper half of the arm it will be seen lying on the lateral side of the brachial artery. Now by the time it runs towards the middle of the arm it will now cross the brachial artery at the level of the insertion of coracobrachialis and it will run anteriorly at this point throughout the lower half of the arm it will now be seen running medially to the brachial artery. What point have we made here? We have said at the upper part of the arm we will see the median nerve lying lateral to the brachial artery. Now at the middle of the arm the median nerve will be seen crossing the brachial artery and running to the medial side. Now throughout the lower half of the arm the median nerve will be seen running at the medial part of the brachial artery or to the elbow. Now look at median nerve in the elbow and also in the forearm. Now in the cubital fossa we will be seeing it lying deep to the bicipital aponeurosis. Here is the cubital fossa and here is the median nerve and here is the bicipital aponeurosis. We are seeing it at this point running deep to the bicipital aponeurosis. Also at this point we will see it leaving this fossa running between the two heads of pronototeres. Actually the median nerve enters the forearm by passing between the two heads of pronototeres. Now it will run into the forearm and will be seen running between two flexor muscles which are flexor superficialis and flexor profundus. Now in this other diagram here, this is the point of the cubital fossa where it ran deep to the bicipital aponeurosis and enters between the two heads of pronotal teres. And here, this is a section of the flexor tulum superficialis, but it has been cut, the lower part has been cut, exposing the inner lying muscle, which is the flexor the tulum profundus. So at this point, we'll be seeing the median nerve running deep to the flexor tulum superficialis and running on the flexor tulum profundus. So this nerve is seen between these two muscles in the forearm. Now towards the wrist, about 5 cm to the wrist, we see the median nerve emerging from the cover of the flexor tulum superficialis. It will run lateral to the flexor tulum superficialis and lie in the interval between the tendons of flexor carpi radialis on the lateral side and palmaris longus on the medial and superior part. So here is the tendon of palmaris longus and here is the tendon of flexor carpi radialis. Now this is the part of flexor tulum superficialis. Now we are seeing the median nerve coming from its cover, running lateral to it and being lodged between these tendons. The carpal radial is here, flexor carpal radial is here, the palmaris longus here, and then the tendon of flexor tulum superficial is here. The median nerve will run in the carpal tunnel. How does it run through the carpal tunnel? 
it will enter the palm by passing through the carpal tunnel. And here we'll be seeing the median nerve running deep to the flexor retinal column and running between the long flexor tendons coming from the forearm. And these tendons are tendons of flexor tendon superficialis, flexor tendon profundus, and flexor pollicis longus. And we are seeing them here. In this diagram, we can see here is the flexor retinal column forming the carpal tunnel. And within, we will be seeing the tendons, four tendons of the flexor tendon superficialis. Below, lying on the same plane, we will be seeing the tendons of flexor tendon profundus. And then, lying most laterally here, we will be seeing the tendon, tendon of flexor pollicis longus. And here, at the middle of all these tendons, we will be seeing the median nerve passing through this carpal tunnel. As it exits from the carpal tunnel, this nerve will divide into two terminal branches, which are the lateral and the medial branches. We will next consider the branches of median nerve. I will consider these branches at the axilla and arm, the elbow, the forearm, wrist, carpal tunnel, and finally the hand. Median nerve has no branch in the axilla and arm, but in the forearm, the median nerve has these categories of branches. One, it has the muscular branches, it has branches to the joints, that's articular branches to the elbow joint and superior to the ulnar joint. We also have one of its big branches, which is the anterior interosseous nerve. We also have other branches that we are giving off in the forearm and then went to the palm. This branch is called the palmacutaneous branch. We also have articular branches to the wrist and inferior with the ulnar joint that is here. And then finally we have a communicating branch with the ulna. So these are the categories of branches of the median nerve at the level of the forearm. We will start from the muscular branches. These branches will arise from the medial side of the median nerve in the cubital fossa, and then they will supply four muscles. What are those four muscles? We have the pronator teres, we have the flexor carpi radialis, the palmaris longus, and flexor teres superficialis. Here we have the pronator teres here, two so we have the flexor carpi radialis here, we have the palmaris longus, and then we have a flexor tutorum superficialis. So it will supply these four muscles of the superficial group. We have one of its branches called the anterior interosseous nerve. In this diagram, here is the median nerve, and then here is its main branch, the anterior interosseous nerve, running down deep to the forearm. Now we we'll consider the anterior interosseous nerve. This is actually the biggest branch of the median nerve in the forearm. This branch is given off at the upper part of the forearm. Here in this diagram, we can see here is the median nerve, and at this point we are seeing the anterior interosseous nerve giving off. Also at this point we are seeing the median nerve, we are seeing the anterior interosseous nerve also giving out. Now this nerve will run down on the surface of the interosseous membrane and then it will not run alone, it will run with a branch of the ulnar artery which is called the anterior interosseous artery. Here is a branch of the ulnar artery and then here is the anterior interosseous artery running alongside the anterior interosseous nerve. Now these two structures will run on the surface of the interosseous membrane between two muscles. On the lateral side, we'll be seeing the flexor pollicis longus, and then on the medial side, we'll be seeing the flexor tendon profundus. The nerve will run distally and will end by entering the deep surface of the protector quadratus 
Here is the pronotal quadratus. And then we are seeing the anterior interosseous nerve running into the deep part of the pronotal quadratus. The anterior interosseous nerve will give muscular branches to the deep muscles of the anterior compartment of the forearm. Now, these muscles are two and a half muscles. One is the flexor pollicis longus, which is here on the lateral side. And the other one is the pronotal quadratus, which is seen at this distal part. Now, in the medial half, which is the flexor tulum profundus, this muscle is supplied by two nerves. One is the anterior interruptions on its lateral part, and then the other is the ulnar nerve at its medial part. We will next consider the palmacrotonus branch. This branch actually arises from the median nerve at about one inch above the wrist. Here is uh, the median nerve, and then we are seeing the palmacrotonus branch running from the median nerve. Now this branch will arise from the median nerve and then pierce the deep fascia to come to the superficial layer where it will enter the forearm by passing above the flexor retinal column. So this palmacrotonus branch does not enter through the carpal tunnel but runs above the carpal tunnel. So what this branch does is to supply the skin of the lateral to third of the palm. As we can see here, this is the lateral to third of the palm. And here is the palmacrotonus branch supplying the lateral to third of the palm. The next branch is the communicating branch of median nerve with the ulnar nerve. Now this nerve will also arise in the upper part of the forearm and will then pass downwards, running medially on the flexor digitorum profundus. And it is here it will join the ulnar nerve. It is this communication that will pass the C7 fibers to the ulnar nerve. Here is the communicating branch with ulnar nerve. That's the branch here. And then sometimes you can see it coming up at various levels, at this level here, and also sometimes at a lower level, as that can be noted here. We will next consider the branches of the median nerve in the hand. In the palm, we noted that the median nerve will flatten at the distal border of the flexor retinal column, and at that point it will divide into its two terminal branches, the lateral and the median divisions. In this chart, here is the median nerve, and here it is seen passing through the flexor retinal column, and then here we are seeing the palmar cutaneous branch running above the flexor retinal column, and then beyond the flexor retinal column, we are seeing the two terminal divisions. Here we are seeing the medial division, and then here we are seeing the lateral division. The lateral division will give a recurrent branch. This is the recurrent branch from the lateral division. This recurrent branch will curl upwards to supply the tender muscles of the hand, that is the muscles of the base of the thumb, and this is with the exception of the deep head of the flexor pollicis brevis. Then it will now divide into three parma digital branches. Here are the three parma digital branches. This is one, here is two, and here is three. Now we'll consider the medial division. Here again is the medial division. The medial division will give two palmar digital nerve. This is one and this is the other. So two palmar digital nerves from the medial and three from the lateral will give us five palmar digital nerves that will give rise to the following branches. One, 
the sensory innervation to the skin of the palmar aspect of the lateral trianal fingers. That is, the, these are the lateral trianal fingers. So these fingers receive their sensory innervation from the five palmar digital nerves. Now, these nerves also will go further to supply the nail bed and skin on the dorsal aspect of the distal phalanges because this is also an area innervated by median nerve. So let's go again. These three and a half fingers will be innervated by these palmar digital nerves. Now, even in the distal phalanges of these lateral three and a half fingers, will also be supplied by the five palmar digital nerves. It will also give motor innervation to the first and second lumbricals. And these are the muscles that we see coming off from the tendons of flexor digitorum profundus. Now we consider this branch from the lateral division, which is the recurrent branch. Now, the recurrent branch of median nerve will give innervation to the three tendon muscles. So how does it do that? We we'll first look at the cause and relation here. It will curve upwards and move laterally, and this will be around the distal border of the flexor pollicis brevis muscle. So here is the nerve again, and then here is where we see it curving round the distal border of the flexor pollicis brevis. Now we have these three muscles here, which are the abductor pollicis brevis, we have the opponent's pollicis, and we have the flexor pollicis brevis. Now we've gotten through the branches, we've gotten through the cause and relations in the various parts. We are going to do a very quick summary of this cause and relation. <clears throat> now we noted that this median nerve started at the level of the axilla. At that point, we noted two roots, the medial root of median nerve and the lateral root of median nerve. And we said that the medial root passed anterior to the third part of axillary artery to form the median nerve as it joined the lateral root. At this beginning, the median nerve lies lateral to the third part of axillary artery. Now, relations in the arm, we said that it, we still see it running with the brachial artery, which is the distal continuation of the axillary artery. It still maintained that position, which is at the lateral part of this artery. And at the mid point of the arm, at this point, we see the insertion of coracobrachialis. We said that this nerve will run anterior to the brachial artery. Now, we also noted that the rest of the lower half of the arm will see this median nerve running medial to the artery. We also noted that this nerve has no branch, both in the axilla and in the arm. Now for the arm, we said that this nerve entered the arm by passing between the two heads of pronator teres. And then it will be seen lying between two muscles, flexor deuterum superficialis above and flexor deuterum profundus below. It will be seen between these two muscles. And we also noted that by the time this muscle went distally, before it got to the wrist, it moved away from the cover of the flexor deuterum superficialis. It moved a bit laterally. And at that point, we said that we saw it between the tendons of Flexor capa radialis laterally, palmaris longus superiorly and medially. Now, in the hand, the nerve will enter the hand passing through the carpal tunnel. And it does this alongside a number of tendons. And those tendons are the flexor tunus partialis, flexor tunus profundus, and then the flexor pollicis longus. We will also look at the summary of the branches. We noted that there are branches, articular branches, 
at the forearm, its main branch, which is anterior interosseous nerve, which supplied the deep muscles of the basal compartment of the forearm. We also talked about the ulnar communicating branch that gave the C7 route to the ulnar nerve. We saw the palmacutinous branch as it ran above the flexor cinaculum to supply the lateral tricotal part. We also saw the terminal branches distal to the flexor cinaculum, which are the lateral and medial divisions. And from these two divisions, we're able to get five palmar digital branches. And from the lateral part, we see the recurrent branch coming, which will supply the three muscles of the tenor eminence. Now, a quick summary of the motor distribution as well. In the flexor compartment of the forearm, the median nerve itself supplied these four muscles. And what are they? The pronator teres, the flexor capillary radialis, palmaris longus, and flexor teres partialis. Now, through its branch, anterior interosseous nerve, it will supply the muscles of the deep group of the flexor compartment. And what are those ones? The flexor uterum profundus, that is the lateral part, flexor pollicis longus, and pronator quadratus. In the hand, we will see this nerve also supplying the first and second lumbricals. So it supplies the lumbricals, it supplies the opponent's policies, it supplies the abductor policies brevis, and the flexor policies brevis. And these three muscles are actually the muscles of the tenor eminence. This is where we will end this first part of the lecture. If you have questions, comments, or suggestions, please drop them in the comment section. The part two of this lecture will be on median nerve injuries and the associated clinical correlates. If you consider this material helpful, we will encourage you to subscribe, like the video, and share it to your friends that it will also be helpful to. And together, we will build a unique anatomy family where we make anatomy simple.